Uh, well now we finished the uh, first part of generics and um, as you know don't be aware there's an awful lot of very unpleasant looking uh, wildcard types that you can create and um, uh, I should just mention that uh, to understand is not to condone as you might say so don't go using them like that left right and center just because you can understand it doesn't mean anyone else can and uh, so uh, this is what we're covering next um, that's mainly about generic methods because that's quite important and uh, uh, so you know you can use uh, you can uh, use a wildcard type in um, in a method where you can also uh, quite often use a, a, a generic method instead of using a wildcard type and we see the trade-off between the two and where you should use one and where you should use the other and so on and then we cover the rest of this sort of stuff uh, enums and uh, things like that um, <coughs> so we've done about half of generic so far now this is the uh, general direction I'm heading in in future um, uh, first of all there's some exception handling to uh, to deal with because um, we have only given just an overview of it but I keep on referring to it so we've probably covered about 80% of it already um, so I'd just like to do that properly um, then uh, uh, something that needs to be mentioned which is garbage collection um, now garbage collection is um, is what happens when um, when you're no longer pointing or referring to something uh, so you've got new and uh, the um, stuff you um, create with new can end up um, not being pointed to and that's when garbage collection comes in uh, so there's a few little things to mention about that but it's nothing too difficult then um, yes yeah, so I should mention something about the string class and the object class because I keep referring to them and never telling you what's in them so I suppose I ought to do that and um, uh, yeah I suppose talk about the um, class operator it's got overloaded for a string just to concatenate strings well it's nothing difficult um, and uh, IO yes yeah, so I should talk about IO and uh, formatting things like that because um, I've not really spoken much about that sort of thing and uh, regular expressions um, that's all sort of tied up together and all quite useful I know regular expressions can be used for other things too. Um, yeah, threads and event handling, um, they sort of go together quite well. Uh, synchronization, stuff like that between um, between threads and processes and so on. Well, all that needs to be talked about. Um, uh, jar files is why I should mention them, and uh, I want to mention annotation too, but yeah. Yeah, mention annotation, I think, um, uh, and uh, reflection too. That needs to be talked about. Cause again, people seem to find that very popular, though they shouldn't really use it probably as much as they are. Um, so this reflection stuff, um, which uh, all uses this class called class, and I suppose serialization ought to be mentioned too. Uh, what else? Um, yeah, uh, swing actually. Yeah, that's. Um, this is the um, when you want a modern looking interface with proper windows they pop up and look like they're modern and not done by just typing stuff in on the command line you use swing that's what that's for I should probably come after this actually this NetBeans stuff um, NetBeans integrate development environment now that's a very popular environment um, that's quite good too it's free um, and uh, that's what you're really developing not type stuff in on the editor and then type um, run the Java compiler and stuff like that it, it does a lot of things for you automatically and um, <coughs> along with that you have, I ought to mention Ant which is the uh, kind of build script language which is uh, what my stuff is done with now years ago I used to use make and that was absolutely terrible uh, and then um, subversion um, now when you've got a lot of people working on a project <coughs> and uh, you've got a got a big project and you, you're releasing stuff uh, you want to control the versions of, that you're releasing and have the pro thing properly versioned in version control that sort of thing that's all to do with subversion there are some other things other things that do the same sort of thing as well as subversion but uh, if you've seen one you've seen them all they're pretty much similar so we discuss subversion um, 
uh, JUnit, that's, uh, that's the thing for unit testing. Uh, when you write a little bit of code and you want to test it, where you can use JUnit, that's, that's a standard sort of thing that's built in uh, right to NetBeans, so why not use it? Um, something else that probably I should mention as well, there's an alternative to NetBeans, you can use Eclipse, and that's a pretty good system too. Um, that's not bad at all, in fact, Eclipse, in, um, it's from IBM by the way, it's, it's quite good. An alternative to NetBeans IDE, you can get download that for nothing too. Um, uh, what else? Uh, yeah, this is really important. Design patterns. Now, it's all well and good knowing about uh, um, classes and uh, abstract classes and subclassing and protected and private and that sort of thing. But if you really want to know how to use um, classes and stuff, the way to do it is to look at design patterns. Uh, it's really so important. It gives you ideas and concepts and ways of approach to designing code. So you've really got to do design patterns. Um, that's that's important, really important. Uh, then I thought I'd go on to uh, look at C++ and uh, perhaps look at the, some of the differences between Java and C++ and um, maybe do C++ next. Um, and then uh, just for a change, because my background is really mathematics, I was going to do um, go into uh, uh, stochastic processes. Well, first of all, we'll probably have to cover measure theory to some extent at least before discussing stochastic processes. Then um, uh, various types, of course, of Brownian processes, Poisson processes, Lebesgue processes, or Stein and Beck processes, God knows what else. And uh, things like um, subordinate Lebesgue processes and that type of thing. And then uh, I do a bit of uh, quantitative analysis, um, and uh, oh, you know, probably up here I'd have to cover things like um, um, Ito's uh, Lima and uh, um, what else, uh, um, Karen Martin Gasanov theorem, that type of stuff. Um, before doing quantitative analysis, which is uh, all about pricing of options and uh, derivative instruments in finance, that sort of thing. Um, and then we can go back and do a bit of uh, computing, I think, um, interfacing to Excel and uh, Quantlib. And uh, I don't know what I'll do. Quantlib is a, a, a useful um, open source library that's come up for use in uh, quantitative analysis, which I'm, I've just started looking at. It's quite good, actually. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know what I'll do after that. I might find something else to do.